Welcome to Electro Online. Now let's talk about the power factor. What is that? And we gave you a little hint on the previous video. So let's go back to the principle here where we have a voltage source, we have a current through the circuit. There's a phase angle difference between the two. It could be negative if the current leads to voltage and positive if the voltage leads to current. We also discovered that the average power dissipated by the resistive portion of the load is equal to the VRMS times IRMS times the cosine of the phase angle difference between the phase angle of the voltage and the phase angle of the current. We can write it as such, cosine of phi, which phi is the difference of the two phase angles, and instead of writing VRMS and IRMS, we can write one half V max I max, it's the same thing. And then we discovered in previous videos that this portion of the equation right here was considered to be the apparent power. The apparent power, hmm, we didn't have a good feel for what that was yet, but that become, will become more and more clear as we go on, and hopefully with this video, again, we'll get a, a better look at it. This other portion of the equation here is called the power factor. So this will be a number between zero and one because it's the cosine of the phase angle. If the phase angle is zero, the cosine of zero is one. If the phase angle is 90 degrees, then the cosine of 90 is zero. So the power factor will be a number between zero and one. And so what happens is we take the apparent power, we multiply times the power factor, and we get the average power, which is the power consumed by the resistive portion of the load. So here, if we call this the average power, if we call this the apparent power, PAPP for apparent power, and call this the power factor, we can see that the power factor is simply the ratio of the average power divided by the apparent power. And again, of course, the power factor is described as the cosine of the phase angle. Now, if we take a look at these two triangles right here, on the left, you see something that looks fairly familiar. Here we have the reactance of the circuit, the resistance of the circuit, and the impedance, and then we have the phase angle. And the relationship between the phase angle, R, and impedance, the resistance and impedance, is that the cosine of the phase angle is the ratio of the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, or R over Z, which is what we have right here. We can draw a similar triangle for the power the adjacent side here is the average power. This is the power, the real power that is consumed by the resistive portion of the load. On this axis right here, we can call that the apparent power S, which is one half V max I max or VRMS times IRMS. And you can see that the phase angle here is the same phase angle that we see over here, which is the phase, same phase angle we see over there. And we then realize that the power factor PF, or power factor, the cosine of phi, is the ratio of the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, or the average power over the, uh, what we call, apparent power. And then we realize that if the power factor is 1, that the phase angle is 0, then the P average equals P apparent. The average power is equal to the apparent power. But if the phase angle is equal to 90 degrees, such that the power factor is 0, then the average power consumed is equal to zero. Then there's no resistive portion to the load. It's only a reactive portion to the load. So that appears then that this vertical line here, the vertical, the vertical distance from there to there, we're going to call that Q, and later on we'll deal more with Q. Q is what we call the reactive power, the power that's consumed temporarily by the inductor or by the capacitor, of course, then it's given back to the circuit because it actually doesn't dissipate the power. So temporarily it takes the power, gives it back, takes it, gives it back, takes it, gives it back. And so this would be the reactive power. This is the real power consumed. And then we can see the relationship between the reactive power, the real power, and the total power or the apparent power. So the total power is not really the total real power. This is the total real power but it's the total power in terms of the phase angle, the reactive power, and the real power consumed by the resistor. That's the relationship there. And now we can see that the magnitude of the apparent power is simply, well, we can write that over here. We can then say that S, the magnitude of that, is equal to the square root of the average power consumed by the resistor squared plus the reactive power squared, and that's, of course, then again, the relationship is to the phase angle, which is called the power factor. One more thing we should know about the power factor is that it can either be lagging or leading. What does that really mean? Well, it turns out that if the phase angle is greater than zero, like in our example right here, 
Then we know that the voltage leads to current. If the phase angle is positive, the voltage leads to current, then we say that the power factor is lagging because the power really depends upon the current, and if the current is lagging, then the power factor is lagging. Hmm, it's kind of weird. You have the phase angle being positive, and yes, the power factor is lagging. So we just have to think about it in terms of the power factor is lagging because the current is lagging, and the power factor depends upon the current. If the phase angle is less than zero, then the current leads the voltage, and then we can say that the power factor is leading. So that's the way you can really figure out if it's lagging or leading. So here we have the basic relationship for the power factor is the cosine of the phase angle, and is the ratio of the average power divided by the apparent power. And so that's what we mean by the power factor, and we're going to see that all over the place whenever we're dealing with power. And it's related to, of course, the phase angle between the resistance, the reactance, the impedance, which is the same phase angle that relates to the average power consumed by the resistor, the reactive power consumed or at least temporarily taken and given back by the inductor and the capacitor in the circuit, and then we have the triangle completed where the hypotenuse is really the magnitude of the apparent power. And so that's how we think about the concept of the power factor.